Okay, we were looking last time about the frequency response and uh, we have gone through uh, a typical circuit of MOS amplifier and we have found out that if I use full analysis of Kirchhoff law that is node analysis then I can find both poles and zeros same time. But many of times as I said zero is normally far away from the gain bandwidth product that is unity gain bandwidth. So it may not be very important and therefore one may say we may have only poles and if those are the only poles one among them may be earlier than the other and the one which appears earlier that is at lower frequency is called the bandwidth point or essentially the point which is the dominant pole okay that is what we discussed last time. Uh, of course there are many amplifiers you can go into the book, uh, you can look into the book, common source, common drain, common gate, common emitter and all sorts of amplifiers. Please look into them. We have given a theory how to solve. Any such circuit can always be solved using the standard procedures. I will just give another method which is a very popular method in engineers which is we discussed in some way earlier but little more detailed circuit I may show you today. It is called zero value time constant analysis to find dominant pole. So we can actually find out dominant pole with no great difficulty. We can just do some analysis and we say okay here is the bandwidth because we are not interested in gain bandwidth, unity gain bandwidth point but we are more interested in the bandwidth where the gain starts falling okay and that point is the dominant pole. So our assumption is the other pole is at least away maybe one order uh, by frequency or even two orders. If it is two orders it is 40 dB below. So in a way that gain has no value even if it is 10 times it is even 20 dB down which is large enough in fact. So essentially what we are saying that we will be very keen to know which is the dominant pole and our assumption to start with is that the dominant pole exists. In reality if you do not want to agree with this then you do full analysis and you will get all poles and zeros wherever you wish and you can find out which is the dominant, which is the most correct and most absolutely proper method. But as I keep saying uh, not every proper method has to be used every time because there is sometimes short of time of doing analysis, there is a quickness to give results, products have to be released and on basis of experience people know this will have a dominant pole. So I am not saying this method is always valid, depends on the values of GM, Rs and everything given it may not be the dominant which we think. But assuming there is, uh, I have taken an example which is intentionally multi-stage amplifier that is it is a cascaded two stages of a MOS amplifier. There is a first stage and there is another stage. What I have not shown here essentially is the DC biasing part in this okay. Though it may exist, RG may exist and uh, supply has to be RG1, RG2 kind but right now only AC equivalent circuits have been, AC circuit has been shown. We also here neglect uh, CC1, CC2 and CS bypass RE, by bypass RS circuit. So there is, why we are neglecting that? Because right now we assume that they do, they are not the part of the external circuit. This is simple analysis to show how to get it. In real life there may be CC1 here, there may be CC2 here, everywhere things will appear as they should. Okay. So if I have this circuit, look at it, the first circuit can be represented by equivalently on this, vein, series resistance, maybe I call it signal if you wish, I do not know what I call it but R signal. Then there is a CGS1, CGD1, then this current source at the output, GMV1, V1 is the voltage here, which is VGS essentially. Shunting that is RO1 and RL1, which is the load provided to you. Then there is a drain to bulk voltage, CDB, and this is this point. So this is my V2 somewhere here we will be my V1 okay. So V2 is now going to be the input of the next stage okay. So this is my input 
there is a CGS2 which is for the gate to source capacitance of the second stage, CGD2 which is the gate to drain voltage capacitance between this V2 and the output. Then there is the equivalent current source which is GM2 V2, uh, sorry yeah GM2 V2 and shunted by RO2, RL2 and CDB2. This is one equivalent this is the other equivalent, this is one, this is other, two stage. What is the advantage of two stage amplifier per se? Why should we use two stages? Let us say I want a gain of 100. So one possibility is that I will make gain of 100 in one single amplifier. The other possibility is I may do 10, 10 or 25 kind of thing, maybe 520 or 25 also is a decision. I will leave it to you to find out if you cannot next time I will tell you. If you have a cascaded stages, there is a method in which first stage gain should be higher or lower than the second stage. It should not be equal that is definite. Whether the first stage should have a higher gain than the next stage or vice versa on what basis we decide that. Product is 100, okay. I can make 10, 10, 5, 10, 5, 20, 25, 33 kind of thing many combinations I can try 4, 25, 25, 4. Okay. So how do I make a choice that the first stage should have a higher gain compared to second or first stage should have much lower gain compared to the second stage. This is something which you must find. I do not think every book would have given but I think Sandra Smith has discussed it somewhere find it out if not I will tell you what why we choose one over the other okay. So is this equivalent circuit clear this is the first stage equivalent circuit this much and this is the second stage equivalent circuit which is given for this what is being missed here CC1, CS and CC2 and we shall separately handle them because we figured out those capacitance values are very high. And therefore, they will actually act like a short circuit at high frequencies, okay. Because we are looking for a dominant pole ahead, so we are expecting that these will be short circuited at most of those frequencies. However, at lower frequencies, they may dominate, and we will look into them where what they do when they are present, okay. So, this is that clear? What I am trying to do is to solve a two stage amplifier, mass amplifier. And my assumption I repeat CC1, CC2, CS everything is much smaller and therefore neglected at high frequency and also RS is bypassed at that frequency because CS will be short circuited. So the bias resistance in the source also will get bypassed at high frequency. So nowhere that RS is taken care though in real DC there will be a RS sitting there is that clear shunted by CS okay but at high frequency RS will get shorted. Okay, having said so, I as I say this is an approximate method to estimate presence of a dominant pole and please do not believe that every time this is true but in most cases 99 percent this will be true. Okay. So you may try once a while, may fail once a while. Okay. Uh, our assumption again is there are no dominant zeros. Okay. That means 0 does not exist prior to the dominant pole. If that occurs, the gain will start rising somewhere. So our assumption right now is 0 is far away. Okay. Uh, so we say a dominant pole which is at the 3 dB point where the gain falls by 3 dB is our dominant pole P1 and again we assume that for the transfer function of the gain P1 should be less than P2 less than P3. If there are n poles, what we are saying is dominant pole is P1, next may be P2, P3 and so on and so forth, okay. Any transfer function of gain can be represented as numerator divided by denominator, ns divided by ds and typically this actually it should come here a0 plus a1s plus a2s square nsn upon 1 plus b1s plus b2s square bnsn. This is first look at this fraction, then I explain this. If there are no zeros in this as we discussed uh, which are dominant the numerator part I just miss it I say they are none, none coming from the numerator. What numerator will give me 0 and I say zeros are 
far away so I am not concerned about only A0 term will remain but that is a DC value or that is a fixed value. So that will go into the gain DC gain part itself okay. Is that correct? This other terms I am neglecting A1S, A2S square, AS, why I neglect? Because my assumption is zeros are far away okay, far away than the poles of my query okay. Is that okay? This is my assumption okay and if there are assumption the numerator is only A0 for example. So equivalently say in a normal gain voltage gain function it can be written as some DC gain divided by 1 minus which includes some P1, P2 value also in the product because that when you take it out that P1, P2 will also come outside okay. Is that clear this S minus P1 is actually appearing so P1 is outside but right now I kept like this. So everything constant is taken care in AB0. So 1 minus S by P1, 1 minus S by two, so on and so forth. So our assumption is if there is a dominant pole which terms are also negligible in the denominator? S square, S cube, S n terms will be negligible because we said S is first term will come from S and we said that is the dominant pole. So we say the next terms are, so if I expand let us say only first two terms it will be 1 plus S times S square A1 S plus B1 S square. So we say okay if S square terms does not exist only the first term B1 S is only dominating term, is that clear? If I take only this product let us say all others are much higher, even with this 1 minus something 1 S term, 1 S square terms okay. So which means essentially what I am going to get is something like this 1 upon P1 plus P2 if I make product of this but this essentially I already said P1 is smaller than P2 so even I say okay I neglect this so I only say that the coefficient is essentially related to S by P1 only is that clear that is what I say the coefficient B1 here is nothing but sum of all such PIs if you take more than that and since i's are only 1 here so it is 1 upon dominant pole is 1 upon p1. So how do we get this? By only observation of this transfer function I realize that this terms can be neglected except a0 here also other terms can be neglected. So only term which will give me dominant pole will be related to b1 and therefore that is how we can evaluate. This is the trick I am going to use. Now how do I get this p value? This is my next question. First is we figured out that all that I have to calculate to get p1, I must somehow get p1 is related to what in normal case we have discussed p1, it is nothing but related to other than trans, uh, time constants. So if there are more than one capacitors which are coming into picture, we must calculate poles occurring due to all such capacitances and the loads associated with them okay and then sum all of them one by like this okay and if I get that 1 upon tau average which I am going to do I will get my poles here is an example for that. Before we go this, this is something which we will discuss in feedback once again but just to give you the S function which you keep drawing everywhere it essentially has two parts it is a complex function sigma which is real part and j omega is the uh, uh, imaginary part. A plane which represents S sigma j omega is called S plane. Any function, complex function can be re represented on sigma j omega. I think this is maths you must have done by now n times. Okay. This is just to show you. And if the poles are real, okay, real, then they are minus, then they must lie on the left top plane sigma must be 0 for them but the imaginary uh, sorry j, j omega term must be mad but only real values if they are only real poles available then all should lie on the left top plane and which is the dominant one which will occur earliest. So P1, P2, P3, Pn poles will be shown here is that clear. So let us say where 0 can occur, 0 can occur here maybe we will say 0 and in that case it is on the right half plane and then system may become unstable as we shall see here. So we will prefer 0 to occur somewhere here on the imaginary axis or even if possible it is on the left top plane even safer or it actually sits on the P1 is that correct I can do that I can actually adjust the value of this 0 
or either here or here or anywhere so that the system becomes more stable and we will see this little bit a uh, little more detail when we come to stability. Any 0 or poles on the right half plane actually leads to instability. What does that mean? That the gain starts increasing and not decreasing is that correct and if increasing means it keeps increasing infinite means system will go to VDD power supply maximum voltage. So it will start saturating out. So it will not remain amplifier. So we say it become unstable is that clear? So we want to see the system remains amplifier. So what is the trick I am keep, keep on telling you all the time that please remember amplifier is the only system in the analog circuit which is of relevance. Everything else is derivable from this okay. All that we keep saying is if I know my amplifier design I know almost everything because all are only derived part out of it because the theory which I will use for amplifier design is as much required for oscillator designs or A to D converter anything which I do later I this is good enough for me if I know my amplifier theory properly that is why I am spending so much of a time on this otherwise I would have actually said okay read this you have done in 12th or maybe in first year but I want to make it very clear that why we are spending so much time on amplifiers because once we understand how do we get amplifier designs then we know roughly everything in analog. So if I take an amplitude of a this it will be dominant pole for this will be AB01 plus omega 0 and Bole plot is correct as long as omega is less than P1 till that time gain is constant beyond we do not know whether dominant poles where they occur. So what I am saying if I dominant this is my pole P1 up to this at least okay I know gain is constant from here onwards and then I do not know excess other poles may further start falling it down minus 20 minus 20 further and further okay. But I am interested in where it falls first okay which is called the bandwidth why it is called bandwidth the term bandwidth was given up to which gain is constant okay. So that value is of our interest okay. Can we tailor P1 as well yes. I can as I said other day if I put a 0 here per se what will happen to there till the next pole occurs which then will become dominant the gain may become higher but something else I have given by that and just check just we will see what happens in feedback we will use the theory oh I nullified that but I lost something else okay I increase bandwidth definitely okay is that clear so something I must be losing in getting higher bandwidth. So we will see what exactly we lost is that okay we will see that little later. So is that issue clear so this plane has been shown to you that I must get my real plane real poles on the left half that is minus value they must occur so that the system is stable otherwise it will be a growing system and we do not want system to grow outputs in the inadvertently. Okay. So this part as I said this figure is just shown here we will come back this figure again. Okay, so the method which I suggest which is called zero value not I suggest is given in many other books and not I did not see very much in the uh, our this book uh, Sedra Smith book and therefore I thought I will write down for you. Okay. Uh, in zero value time constant assay what we see every capacitor sees some equivalent resistor sees now that word sees is very important. And then we say and if that resistance equivalent resistance is RUQ the time constant associated with that capacitor is RUQ times C is that correct. So if you have as many capacitors you have find R equivalent for as seen by each of them. Now the analysis which we did is something interesting here our assumption here is superposition theorem is valid what does that mean that is the influence of each capacitor is independent which may not be in reality many times is that correct the capacitance with CGD may influence both all sides in fact but our assumption is each capacitor is independently controlling outputs to input ratios and therefore if we can take independent influences of all capacitor and we add all of them as their time constants then we say average value is okay. Okay, this is our assumption 
superposition theorem is what we are going to apply as what is the when, when superposition theorem is true when the system is linear then only superposition is possible and I repeat I did tell you once if not we check again y is equal to mx plus c is a straight line okay. So looks that be linear this looks like a linear but it is not a linear system is that correct y is equal to mx plus c is not a linear system but which is linear there y is equal to mx is linear but y is equal to mx plus c is not a linear system. So do not think that if a straight line occurs it is a linear system okay. What does superposition say if x change to 2x y should also become 2y okay and only then superposition is valid in this case. So okay this is assumptions since we are making n assumptions n plus 1. So if there are n capacitors we say tau 1 is r equivalent 1 c1, tau 2 is r equivalent c2, tau n is this and then we say the net tau is just sum of all such taus then the dominant pole will be 1 upon tau average this is what we are going to say okay. Now let us see in our circuit which we just now put these are this how many capacitors you are seeing? one is CGS1, other is CGD1, CDB, CGS2, CG2 and CDB. There are 6 capacitances which are of relevance 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 okay. So we like to see each capacitor sees how much equivalent resistor is that correct and if I get that equivalent resistor I get RC time constant for each of these capacitance and then I sum all those time constant m1 upon tau is the dominant pole. Now why I am saying this may method the first day when I solve something a mass amplifier and I give you a dominant pole ex expressions please verify whether the expression I get from here is same as what I got there okay and you will find to your great surprise it is almost same it is not exactly same almost same okay. So let us see that almost same part is how, so, how almost. So the first capacitance of interest is CGD1 which one I talk CGD1 I am talking of this this circuit CGD1 okay is that okay this is V2 this is this. So whenever I will do this analysis the first thing I will do is short all independent sources open the current source and short voltage source okay short all voltage sources independent please remember the word independent short all independent voltage sources are open all independent current sources. If I do this okay then at the V1 I get only RS please look at that circuit since V1 is 0 so only RS remains this is the voltage V1 okay then there is a CGD1 a capacitance here at the output GMV1 plus RL dash and now we assume that the next stage is right now removed as if equivalently that is equivalent input for that is shorted removed from this okay. So we say the output is VO1 which is RL1 dash is RL1 plus RC parallel if you RL is high uh, you can say RL dash is RL1 that is fair enough. Now the condition which I am going to say replace this capacitor by a current source I replace this capacitor by a current source I is that correct and we say the drop across the capacitor is plus minus V is that clear V across the capacitor the voltage is V plus minus V is that okay. Then we say the resistance seen by the capacitor is V by I is that clear method I repeat replace the capacitors by voltage V calling this call as V plus plus minus V and a current source of I connecting that is that correct. So what is the is that for every capacitor I will replace it by current source V and drop that across is V is that clear this is what the 0 time constant analysis is what we are going to do okay. I shorted V in I replace the capacitors by equivalent current source I which gives you a drop of V 
then the V by I is nothing but the resistance seen by the capacitance, okay. Now if that is so, yes, why we removed? Oh yeah, the, we say loaded is unloaded cities, okay, because we are doing superposition, we only take care of E individual efforts. The other capacitance are short out, okay. So the other loads as if are not, no output, input is going to the output side, equivalently same, okay, that is what we did. The assumption is superposition theorem is valid in what cases and why we can sum up each component time constant has nothing to do with time constant per se. Any function can be such way added and average can be taken. This is a theory, mass theory. We just have applied it to our case to get equivalent values of that, okay. It is a functional system. I am just applying it to a circuit system, okay. Is that okay? Now, if I do this, you see keep seeing your circuit, what is the drop across Rs? V1, what is the drop across Rs? V1, so I times Rs is V1, okay. If you look at, please look at this circuit, If you, I do not know whether you can get, maybe or thoda dele, okay, now thoda sa dekha. So the drop across Rs is V1, I Rs is the drop which is V1, but if you see the other side, this is I minus GM V1, remember I is in this direction. So the current passing in RL dash is minus I and minus GM, both are currents opposite. Please remember this is the actual current direction to get VO1, is that correct? How do I get a voltage drop IR? This is the current side, but actual currents are both opposite sign. So minus I minus GM V1 into RL1 dash is nothing but V0, 1 or call V2. Yeah, please ask. Current direction is in this direction, I. Yeah, likha na arrow I. Ye bhi opposite hai iske. Ye bhi iska ulta jayega aisa. Ye bhi aayega na. Ye aisa jayega. Hai na? Aur voltage kaise naapte hai? Like this. So V1 is essentially minus I minus GM, some of them actually with a minus sign into RL1 dash is V01. However, what is uh, resistance associated? V, v is how much? Voltage drop across capacity is how much? V1 minus V01, okay, divided by I is the resistance, is the resistance. So if I substitute from here in this, I will get minus I1 plus GM1 IRS into RL is V0 and then take V0 by I is this, V1 by I is RS from here. So I write V1 minus V0 1 if you keep calling. Then RGDO1, this is the name I give you, CGD. 0, 1 is the capacitance, uh, the resistance seen by CGD1 is RGD01, which is RS plus RL dash plus GM1 RS RL1 dash. Is that okay? Just some, there is nothing, just get the terms correctly, okay. So, have I got which, which uh, resistance I got? Resistance associated with CGD1. I can do same analysis for every capacitor, is that correct? And if I do this, I can get correspondingly R equivalents for each of them, okay. Is that point clear? I have shown you one. Every time you must do that circuit, draw that and see. If there is no current source, it GM term will go away from there, okay. Okay. So having shown this, similarly if I say RGDO2 is seen by CGD2, then RGDO2 will be RL1 dash. Why this RL1 dash is coming here? What is that RL1 dash essentially equivalently? The RS for the next stage, okay. So RL1 dash plus RL2 dash into GM2 RL1 dash RL2 dash. So this is the resistance seen by CGD2. That is second stage feedback capacity, CGD2, okay. It is identical stage. Is that correct? The first stage and second stage, only thing is RS is replaced by 
R L one dash because the R L one dash acts like a source resistance for the next stage. Okay. Similarly, then I can see R G S O one is seen by C G S one. R G S O one is how much is R G S O one? You can see in the circuit. How much is this? Is seeing. You shot this. R S only resistance it will see is. RS. So I said okay, if I that so then RGSO1 is RS, RGSO2 is RL1 dash which is the RS for the next stage. How much is RDB1, RDBO1 this capacitance is seeing? Parallel combination of RL1 and RL2 because the next stages are short all capacitance are removed. So only resistance seen is this much okay R, RO parallel RL1. So if I do that, this is RDBO1 is RL1 dash. By same argument, RDBO2 is RL2 dash as seen by CDB2. So have I now calculated equivalent resistance seen by all six capacitors? Is that okay? So what is the method I am suggesting? C for each of this only the case which will occur whenever the GM terms on the V other terms occur, then we will get this longer expression. Otherwise, only simple resistances will appear. Only in those cases you will get RL plus RS plus GM RL RS kind of term. Rest of the time it is straightforward. Okay. So I calculate all equivalent resistances seen by capacitance. So I can calculate six time constants. Is that clear? RC, RC, RC for all of them. Is that okay? So if I do that, then I see. RGSO1 is TGS1, TGS2 is RGSO2, CGS2, CGD1, RGDO1, CGD1. Only thing this is long enough because you can say that is the only place where the value is large enough. CGD2 is this, CDB1 is this, CDB2 is this and then by our assumption of zero value transfer function theory, one can say average tau or sum of the tau, net tau is sum of all this tau. Okay and the dominant pole is 1 upon tau okay. So is this method clear to you to everyone? What is the method I suggest? Take every capacitor, find equivalent resistance seen by it, take RCs of all of them, sum of that 1 upon tau is your pole, dominant pole okay. Now we will maybe not today, next time I will give one problem and show you that yeah you solve fully and you solve with this, the values are very close to each other and therefore valid in the example I will take. Okay. Please see I am repeatedly telling you the circuit solving which last time I showed putting all nodes, all capacitances, solve everything using nodal equation is the ideal solutions. Is that clear? Nothing can go wrong in that because we are not missing any term anywhere. Okay. So if you solve nodal equations for full equivalent circuit, that is the ideal situation. But many times I may, I know that I am not interested in any other parameter than the bandwidth, I can even resort to this technique and can get the solution faster. Is that clear? Like first day I showed you if you only use dominant poles, then what is the problem we got? Zero aapke se nikal gaya, okay. Then we say nee, nee, then how do I? So in this assumption why that zero is not relevant? If that is relevant, this theory still is not valid, okay. But in most cases, it will happen that 0 will go beyond GBW, that is gain bandwidth, 0, 1 dB gain uh, bandwidth, uh, 1 dB frequency, it will always go beyond that. So in most cases, unless of course you tailor for the other one, change it, this will not occur, okay. And therefore, the solutions are normally okay, but not necessarily every case it is correct. Okay, so having shown you the tricks which we many of us play in actual designs, so I am trying to keep saying you all that if you are only doing analysis, do correct analysis, why stop it, is that correct? I mean you have a circuit, you draw equivalent, solve it, the, if you are going through a spice, it does not require any approximation, let it put everything there now, usko aane karne do na, aapko to karne hai nahi hai. let it solve any difficult problem, okay. But if I had to solve numerical and someone say, how much will it be? 
आई डोंट आई से ओके टाइम कांस्टेंट रफली कितना है इतने सेकंड्स हैं माइक्रो सेकंड्स हैं नैनो सेकंड्स हैं और इतना बैंडविड्थ है इसका सो दैट इज द वे डिजाइनर्स इन द लैब डू और इन द चिप डिजाइन वी ओके वी से ओके रफली आई रिक्वायर दिस सो शुड आई पुट डब्ल्यू बाय सो मच बिकॉज़ दिस जीएम विल हेल्प मी ओके एंड दैट इज हाउ आई कीप एडजस्टिंग वैल्यू व्हेन आई बिकॉज़ रिमेंबर स्पाइस व्हिच इज अ एक्सेलेंट सर्किट सॉल्वर it requires input file from your side okay that means you will have to give that inputs okay now if there are variations how many variations you will try 100 1000 million so somewhere at least where to start at least should be known to you okay even if you are going on a spice the first guess has to be relatively okay okay even if you are doing a full circuit analysis using spice so you otherwise what will happen you will get you will put some inputs and you will get some output which will always spice will always solve that igv it cannot stop you otherwise but what is the values of g's and i's of v's you have put it it depends on you which currents it will show okay therefore how many things to be within control you should use is this techniques should be is that okay? that's why we keep telling you how i on a spice it's not arbitrary you have to decide how much to otherwise uh many of my uh, graduate student say oh sir a whole night i was working so what was he working he gave some wrong guesses whole night music sunta raha spice to chalta raha usko ko aap kuch kar nahi sakte oh, he is taking step by step and trying to solve it uh, finally he say uh, it's gave a correct solution after say 23 hours so or 23 hours i worked you didn't do anything actually okay but you were foolish to start with a wronger inputs and now uh, you are just uh, doing this repeatedly changing dx 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 some day it will come finally so you have to understand that even using a simulators you ought to be academically sound enough to give correct inputs otherwise the time convergence will never occur okay and therefore solutions will never seen by you so people always say sir hamare paas pai se we can always do yeah you can do it and you will do it in 10 years okay but tomorrow i to, i need the result okay so what do i do so these theories which we keep telling you the methods we are suggesting are even using spice you should know otherwise you say everything is doable now no it's not doable okay let's do something different uh, before we quit this amplifier biz, uh, frequency business last time we said in all so far analysis that this so called coupling capacitor the shunting capacitor across rs are neglected by us okay and we solved everything just for high frequency and all that high frequency they were all treated short circuits okay but at frequencies very very low small enough their impedances are not infinites or shorts zeros or whatever it is they are effective then but at those frequencies the other capacitors may not be working cgd or if omega is very low then the, that impedance will be infinite so the capacitances which were very dominant at high frequency may not be dominant at lower frequency the capacitance which will have impedance as dominating at lower frequency will be not dominating at higher frequency so this is the value system which allows us to separate the two if they are very close by then this may not be correct then we must take all of them together but this doesn't occur cc1 will be of the order of microfarads how much was cgd1 and this value last time in the class i said puff so i am talking of the order of 10 to power 6 that is 6 order higher or lower values are chosen for the other two so these capacitors this may be even 20 microfarad or 30 microfarads you have done this exam i think you must have already done in a uh, lab how much the electrolyte capacitor you have to put across the re or rs okay very high values okay this is also a small query which in the lab someone should ask why electrolyte capacitors cannot be their polarity cannot be changed okay by all other capacitors you can connect both ways okay but electrolyte capacitors need to be connected as given plus minus hmm? why what will happen of course there will rupture that i can tell you try once and it will burst also okay uh, but why why those cap otherwise all capacitances are directionless i mean you can put this way or that way hmm? 
So, why electrolyte capacitors behave little differently? Okay, they are polarity dependent. Okay. So, must look the effect CC1, CS, and CC2, and which capacitance are now I am neglecting? CGS, CGD, and CDD. I said, oh, these are not relevant for me. This is AC ground. Why did I put AC ground? VDD for AC is ground. So, this is AC ground. This is an AC equivalent I am showing you with a transistor on. This is my bias capacitance Rg, this is R signal, this is CC1, this is RL, this is Rd and of course there is a RS I should show here. Okay. Now I figure out, let us look at the only input side, this side. How much is Vg? It is a divider this voltage or uh, this impedance or resistance divided by the net impedance is that correct into V in is V g. So, V g is R g upon R g plus R signal plus impedance due to capacitance is that clear which is 1 upon SCC 1 look at this part in R g 1 parallel R g 2 but that is same as equivalent R g because the other terminal will go to the AC ground. Rg once the second terminal is also going to the AC ground that is ground. Rg2 is also other terminal is going to the ground. So, both are in parallel anyway. So, they are equivalent. Okay. So, this Vg is Vn. I can do little readjustment of the term that is what I say first multiplied by SSC1 across this put SC1 above then take Rg as S1 outside as I did and readjust the terms. So, I get Rg upon Rg plus R signal into S upon S plus 1 upon Cc1 into Rg plus R signal into V. Same expressions can be converted into this expression. What is this value? DC because DC means 0 frequency, do not say DC per se that is frequency independent term. That is like AV0 kind equivalently say. This is S upon S plus omega. Kya hota hai transfer function? Kiska hota hai? Abhi pahle 1 upon S plus omega hota to konsa filter hota? Low pass. Fall hota na? Low pass. Ek pole aya. Iske aage block kar dega ho. Ye konsa hoga? It is a high pass filter. Okay. It is a transfer function for a high pass filter. So, right at the start. CC1 is giving you high pass filter, is that correct? This has to be understood that this is giving. So, certain up to certain frequency it may not pass, but beyond that frequency it will pass, is that correct? That means below this particular frequency the gain may fall, is the input may fall, or that is VG will be very small or negligible. Beyond that, only full VG will be made available to you. This is the trick we want to utilize. Okay. Please take it if you read the books, it is not identical to what I say there, but still you read book much more seriously because they give many more details than what I give. Okay. But what I teach here is only that you know how they will look into it. Okay. What I say essentially is I actually tell you something in between the lines. Okay and book gives all the lines. So, do not miss lines or do not miss in between the lines. Okay. So, I am only complementing what is given in the book. I am not replicating what book gives. Please remember, I am not replicating all of it. I am only telling you what is they mean meant by that. Okay. Clearly, V0 by Vn is a transfer function which is some constant into S upon S omega 0 which is a transfer function for a high pass filter. Okay. So, a theory bataya ki jaisa hi aap aisa dekhte hain essentially to bode plot mein kaisa dikhna chahiye aapko how do you expect the bode plot to start if i plot aisa gain dikhaya maine aur ye omega hai kaise kahan se shuru hona chahiye high pass hai yani kya hoga idhar to high pass hai aur idhar kya hoga fall hona shuru ho jayega 
तभी आपको हाई पास बोला ना आपने एंड दिस इज अवर पोल वेयर इट स्टार्ट बिकमिंग कॉन्स्टेंट ओके सो आई एम अभी वट वी आर गोइंग टू सी नाउ दैट ईच देर आर हाउ मेनी कैपेसिटेंस एस पी है थ्री दिस इज अवर मिड बैंड गेन सो द थ्री कैपेसिटेंसेस मस्ट से फॉर एग्जाम्पल समथिंग थ्री पोल्स मस्ट अपियर ड्यू टू थ्री कैपेसिटेंसेस and each will actually give rise value 20 db 40 db and 60 db to reach this mid band value is that clear to reach this mid band value and beyond this what will happen gain will become constant so this frequency is what uh, let's say this the frequency at which mid band starts and this is our first pole so this is called fl this is called fh and what is the bandwidth really bandwidth is defined where gain is constant normally fls are very small compared to fh fls are very small compared to fh so fh many times we call the fh itself as the bandwidth is something like telling this is 1 megahertz and this is say 1 kilohertz okay so you subtract 1000 minus 1 999 kilohertz which is as much as 1 megahertz is that clear so many times we do not define bandwidth by fh minus fl we may say fh itself but if fl is not very small uh, as we thought here let's say it is 10 kilo 100 kilohertz it is reducing substantially so i must understand what is the value of fl before my assumption that the bandwidth is only fh or otherwise calculate fl and subtract from fh independently numerically it may get subtracted or not is not your choice we just subtract numerically if it is very small it will not be worth six decimal or if it is equivalent will reduce the number in first decimal okay so you have to understand that we must evaluate every time and numerically value sometime may not be worth actually subtracting okay but we must know what is the low value itself okay so where from this low values are coming therefore cc1 cc2 and cs these are the capacitances are being very high they will start dominating at low frequency is that clear so first thing we are already we want to now calculate the effect of cc1 cc2 cc this तो so, CC1 का तो आपको पोल दिखा दिया मैंने विच इज द पोल फॉर CC1 CC1 सॉरी दिस आर एस आर जी है सॉरी लेट मी राइट अगेन द फर्स्ट पोल विच आई एम सींग इज आर जी प्लस आर सिग्नल इन टू सी सी वन ये फर्स्ट पोल आने वाला है मे बी वी कॉल इट ओमेगा पी वन फॉर द सेक ऑफ Now we don't know whether omega p1 is the first or second or third. We'll see values and we'll accordingly say which one is one, two, three. But right now we call one. R k, for example, this figure, this is the value where, which we are talking. As oh, s is the numerator. Ni r essentially it says that at z s there is a zero at zero itself. that means beyond that the gain is rising anyway when s is zero means that omega equal to zero the zero occurs what it tells that the 20 db plus it should start at right right from the ahead but this other value lower one is a pull which is also now increasing because of the s upon term which essentially you say you divide by this you are equivalent value if you calculate it is still rising okay equivalently this is reducing but this is rising okay so the average is still rising for you okay average is still rising for you that's why it's called high pass as you rise it's then at at s is equal to infinity it will become constant which is equal to this you can see what i'm saying it is 1 plus omega 0 by s if this becomes infinite or very high this will become constant okay no no i i am only saying that this is what Transfer function of high pass filter is s upon s plus omega is a high pass filter. Okay, we'll do filters again and we'll show you why it is high pass. Actually, we'll evaluate that value. Okay, 
right now you assume 1 upon s plus omega 0 is a low pass filter s upon s plus omega 0 is a high pass filter okay at lower frequencies rs is not bypass this fact has to be understood but at higher frequency rs is bypass so this in calculation of low frequency rs cannot be neglected because rs is used for dc so rs is actually coming there is that correct this is only bypass when when frequencies are very high otherwise rs appears because this impedance is not shorting rs this is finite the capacitance due to cs 1 upon omega cs is comparable with rs so rs cannot be neglected but if one that is equivalent to zero then we say rs is shorted is that clear so at low frequency rs must be considered at low frequency cs is not shorting at high frequency cs shorts and therefore rs shorts across ah wo wo mujhe abhi method dikhaya tha na time constant uske liye ab main bar bar naya figure nahi banana isliye wahan laga ke rakh diya maine aapko abhi method bataya na capacitor dekho kitna r dekhta hai wo okay uh, if that so I just done for one of the capacitance. Rest you try yourself. I take a case of say CC2, which is at the output side. Please look at the circuit again. For this capacitance, this is the RL and this is the RD. Input is shorted. Corresponding with this goes. So we say CC2 sees V1 minus V2 RD and RL. So how much is R equivalent for that? I just done the maths. V1 is IRD, V2 is minus IRL, V2 minus V1 minus V2 by is V by is RD plus RL. So what is the equivalent resistance seen by CC2? RD plus RL. So tau CC2 is RCC2 times CCC2, which will give me the sec another pole, which is one upon two pi RC2 CC2. I have done analysis for all three, but I am showing you the final result. Try methods I have suggested. Then the poles occurring due to the CS capacitance shorting RS or across RS can be given as GM by CS. Solve the same method as I suggested. Okay. GM by CS. Okay. Yeah, GM kya aara hai wahan par? Can you think why it is coming? Please look at it. This current is passing through RS. we have done common source with source resistance same method i am using this current is passing through so this voltage is this drop plus this drop and that is why that gm term is appearing okay please look back what we did earlier okay so the another pole which i see due to cs is gm by cs okay how much will be cc1 kya cc1 dekhega same method se bolo आपके फिगर में बोलो कितना होगा आर जी प्लस आर सिग्नल दैट द ओनली रेजिस्टेंस इट विल सी दीज मेथड्स आर नॉट सो वेरी कॉमन इन द बुक्स ऑफ कोर्स यू कैन गो एंड नाउ रीड द बुक आईदर आर फोर ऑफ देम विच आर आई गेव दे हैव लिटिल मोर रिगरस और मे बी दे आर पुटिंग सम एरोज लुक इन टू इट इज ए जी एम इक्वल एंड दिस फाइनली वॉट दे विल गेट इज वॉट आई एम गेटिंग विदाउट डूइंग ऑल दैट दैट्स द वे आई डू इट is that fun clear you saw complete circuit everything comes you don't have to do any of my methods but i always show you plus something which is otherwise known to others so theek hai mera naya method aap okay if that's so last part uh, we write okay this also is done finally if we see there are three poles omega p1 due to cc1 omega p2 due to cs and omega p3 c this since we know roughly the values we figure out omega p1 occurs here here omega p2 occurs here omega p3 occurs here this is the bode's plot you will say why it will be omega? it can be omega 3 also whichever comes okay but by general knowledge of the values gms we use rgs we use r signal we use you can see why this is the lowest can you think 
देखो जरा फंक्शन में क्यों वो सबसे लोएस्ट लग रहा है आपको आर जी इज वेरी हाई ना सो ऑब्वियसली दैट विल कम फर्स्ट ओके देन बिटवीन द टू ऑल्सो बिकॉज द सी सी टू आर वेरी हाई ओके दिस विल एक्चुअली कम दिस 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 इट विल कम द लास्ट बट एनी वे दिस मे चेंज वन से वैल बिकॉज जी एम वैल्यू इज डिसाइडेड बाई द करंट आई बायस ओके एंड दैट मे चेंज सम वैल्यूज बट एज ऑफ नाउ बिकॉज सी एस इज इवन हायर दिस विल स्टार्ट नाउ प्लीज रिमेंबर सी एस इज रिलेटिवली वेरी हाई शॉर्टिंग दी आर एस द कैपेसिटेंस आर थर्टी माइक्रोफोर ट्वेंटी फाइव माइक्रोफोर सो जी एम बाय सी एस विल बी अर्लियर देन ओमेगा पी थ्री बट इफ हैपन्स टू बी देन कॉल दिस ओमेगा पी थ्री एंड कॉल ओमेगा डोंट टेल मी सर आपने इधर बोला ऐसा नहीं वैल्यू जो भी हो बट सिंस आई नो सी एस आर वेरी हाई दे एंड देर ऑफकोर्स आर नॉट एज हाई एज आर जीज देर फॉर फर्स्ट विल कम दिस देन इट विल कम दिस एंड देन इट विल This is twenty. This is forty. This is sixty. Okay, you are perfect. He is right. Essentially, what we are saying that once you rise, the second pulse picks over, and then it also gives another twenty d. Because it's a pole, it must decrease. Essentially, what we say it's a pole means it will decrease. Sixty ka forty ho jayega, forty ka twenty ho jaye. Is that clear? It's a minus twenty d b pole de raha hai. So sixty upar se chala. फिर 20 नीचे आया 40 हुआ फिर और 20 नीचे आया तो 20 हो गया इज दैट ओके एंड देन इट रीचेज सो वट इज एफ एल हियर विच वैल्यू इज एफ एल ओमेगा पी थ्री इज दन अपॉन टू पाई एफ एल इज ओमेगा पी थ्री सो आई गॉट माई लोएस्ट कट ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी विच आई कैन इवेल्युएट एंड से ओके दिस इज द एफ एल एफ एच हाउ डू आई कैलकुलेट बाय माई डोमिनेंट पोल थ्योरी आई गेट माई एफ एच एंड एफ एच माइनस एफ एल इज the bandwidth please remember and amplify which two parameters are of interest to us the gain and the bandwidth so we evaluated both of them okay what is the third one which is also worrying us please share phase but some are yeah, assuming stable phase is less than 180 yeah you are perfect phase margin as it is called but what else there is another term which is worrying us which we never so far calculated in every system that first we must calculate what is that power the most worrisome part in all of this at the end of the way we find it is the power dissipation which will limit okay everything okay okay there is a sentence which i said some day to you i don't know design a low power power amplifier When I say power amplifier, I want higher power, isn't it? That's what I meant by power amplifier. Otherwise, voltage amplifier normal will be. No, yeah, current amplifier. So I say power amplifier. Then I said, no, you please design a low power power amplifier. What do I mean? What did I mean? Me meant that time. The dissipation should be very low in the devices or the circuit, but the delivered power to the load should be as high as possible. Is that correct? so that is why it's called low power power amplifier because you not need large power to be delivered but you don't want the circuit to dissipate larger power okay so sometimes this fun is made low power power amplifier so it's essentially meant this okay okay so this finishes all kinds of normal amplifiers single stage others which i have not done please read common source common gate common emitter emitter follower all of them are given in book method is identical to all of them okay. the most important of all of these all these amplifiers are not really single ended amplifiers okay which which amplifier we use maximum you already started working on it which amplifier chip you are using opam so is the opam is essentially different from all that we did yeah it is some way different but it follows much of the laws which we discussed in single ended amplifier so that amplifier opam has three stages maybe n stages also we can do a typical opam will have first block as we shall call defam differential amplifier okay 
then i'll i'll put it second stage we will say gain stage and finally a typical op amp has three stages differential amplifier followed by a gain stage followed by a buffer stage okay so any op amp you see you see only how do you see all of this you only see this of course this plus minus is relevant but is of course there is a bias points they also show here plus vdd minus vss this is your v in some way connected and this is your vo so op amp essentially contains a good op amp at least should have around 22 transistors okay abhi tak ke amplifier mein kitne transistor lag rahe the ek do aisa na to op amp mein 22 transistor hai so it is not a real simple looking things but individually if you see it's not very difficult okay it's not very difficult so let's look from which stage i should start with before i go for op amp no no def amp first stage in the op amp is def amp so let's see def amp the word def amp essentially is called differential amplifier okay there is also a word difference amplifier which is not same as differential amplifier please take it there is a word which will use called difference amplifier so it is similar but not same so do not this do not make same name difference amplifiers and differential amplifiers are different as far as their outputs are concerned the architecture may not be very different okay so please take this in your mind sometimes someone very casually uses so i thought i should explain you there are two kinds of def amp in the market op amps are in the market one using bjts which ones you are using the numbers right now 741 which is mostly bipolar okay 7741c is a mos device okay so either you can get mos op amp or mos def amp or you can get bjt def amps all differential amplifiers have two inputs v in 1 and v in 2 okay then we define two diff, two signals for any difference differential amplifier okay one we call difference signal what we call is difference signal which is called vid i stand for input d for difference is that correct vid id are subscripts v is the voltage id so vid means input difference voltage which is subtraction of the two inputs v in 1 minus v in 2 okay so what signs vid can have vid can have which signs both are one both because v in 1 can be larger than v in 2 or v in 2 can be larger than v in 1 if you define v in 1 minus v i v in 2 as v i d it can be either plus or minus is that okay plus minus v i d can be plus minus depending on which one is higher or lower okay we define another signal which is called common mode signal called vcm common mode okay which is nothing but the average of the two v in 1 plus v in 2 by 2 these are the two input signals we'll use in all our differential amplifier theory okay now first thing first why are we so keen about def amp abhi tak all amplifiers we have seen we can have a gain of any stage by cascading or by cascoding okay by cascode i can also fool people by not losing bandwidth but getting the gain higher so why i am interested in differential amplifier so here is some big advantage which differential amplifier gives over all single ended amplifiers 
major advantage of defam is it has a much higher immunity to environmental noise okay that means if the noise is please remember in a normal single ended amplifier at the input if noise comes what will happen at the output noise will also get amplified by the amplifier along with the signal so un, pehle to aapke paas millivolt uh, microvolt noise aaya aur baad mein millivolt noise aa gaya okay so second stage mein aane tak to noisy noise dikha aapko hai na so it is if you use single ended amplifier noise cannot be eliminated of course i should not say that word because we do try that also but as of now we say normal common stage cascade or casco stage noise is enhancing every gain stage because that also sees the same gain okay so defam has the biggest advantage that it eliminates so called this noise okay that's what we are looking for why we are looking for reduction in noise because we want signal to be amplified and not noise what is the term we use for this signal to be amplified higher than the noise then what is the ratio we look for signal to noise ratio so what we are really looking for any amplifier is large signal to noise ratio snr as is called snr signal to noise ratio okay so all amplifier should show higher signal to noise ratio single ended amplifiers do not do that okay because they snrs are maintained in the same noise also get enhanced i want to improve snr okay so how do i do is the differential amplifier improves snr that's what it is all for okay it also allows you higher voltage swings than the single why what do you mean by higher voltage swing as a larger signals larger swing of signals what happens in a single ended amplifier what will happen if the input signal is very high we kept saying on day one small signal small signal if signal is higher what will happen saturation means harmonics will start coming other frequency component will also come in so it will start saturating compared to single ended this can be a larger swings okay that's the trick of the trick okay actually wo large nahi hai ek kya ek taraf aisa hai aur uska ulta idhar rakha hai to ek tarah aisa lagta hai ki swing jada hai thoda fooling hai but hey but there is only one disadvantage how many transistors single ended will require one transistor okay here the minimum requirement is three transistors or more as i say i'll show you okay at least three to lagenge bahut bhi lag sakte hain as i said total number of devices required on a opam r22 minimum okay so or bhi lag sakte hain so there is a additional area penalty on the chip if you are making a chip of a analog block okay. otherwise defam is very good very good and its difference gain as we shall see is extremely high how much anyone typically difference amplifier or differential state amplifier has a large open circuit gain is very high 10 to the power 4 or 10 to the power 5 how much is normal gain of an amplifier 10 20 100 1000 maximum 600 700 i can go to 10 to the power 5 okay that's the biggest advantage defam will provide very large gains it can create in open circuit system we'll see what that word means okay i have two single ended amplifiers m1 related to this m2 related to this is that clear a uh, two single ended amplifiers have a common power supply voltage drains are common the only thing is now i am saying i am substituting inputs v in one and v in two to the two amplifiers and i am picking up two output voltage vo1 and vo2 but what i am going to do I, if individually this amplifier i have to solve i can solve individually if i have to solve i can solve but what i will be interested in what is v in 1 minus v in 2 amplification to v o 1 minus v o 2 ratio of what i am looking for output difference v o 1 minus v o 2 is the output difference divided by input difference v in 1 minus v in 2 what is that value that is where the difference amplifier is differential is that correct 
is that point clear the difference of input and difference of output okay i can also say one of the output divided by difference input that also i can look into is that clear that is v o 2 divided by v in 1 minus v in 2 or v o 1 divided by v in 1 minus v in 2 also can be of interest these devices are these are called single blended outputs when only one of the output is of interest to us okay both will be present but only one is of interest to us so we will see both of them if i do this and these are then i i have to do independent biasing for both of them is that clear because these are two amplifiers i require bias for both of them let us say I put a current source here, current source here. So, I need two current sources to bias independently and they may not be identical any time. Is that clear? So, I said okay, why not I join the source of the two transistor and connect a common current source. Is that word clear to you? Here, if I put it, I will require one current source here, one current source here. Okay. They may not be identical in many cases, may be identical, but but I need two sources. So, what I did? I merged them and put one common source, common current source. Okay. What is current source doing? The biasing the two transistors. Is that clear? Biasing the two and where should they get biased? What is the state of these two transistors should be all the time? Saturation. They must remain in saturation. If they come out of saturation, they will not amplify. This will go to linear modes then, okay, or cutoff modes. So, they must remain in saturation that is our condition for amplification. Right now they can be different but in most cases if you are in a single silicon chip Rd1 must be, will be equal to Rd2. In, so if you go in the lab you pick up these two separate amplifier and connect they may these two may not be identical even if you let us say you chose a 47 kilo ohms resistor. 247 kilo ohm resistor do not have 47 kilo ohm exact values. Some may have 47.15, some may have 47, 46.9, though they are marked as 47k. So, RD1 may not be identical to externally if you put two devices, they may. But if I make on a single chip, small area, I can more likely say RDs will be equal. Okay. So, is, is that point now getting clear to you why single? op amps are not made by making simple separate MOS transistors and hooked up on a board. Is that point clear to you? Because nothing can be then made, M1 cannot be same as M2 in a two separate transistors, you buy okay, M2 or M1 they can never be identical, its cavity same nahi hoga, its size is same nahi hongi, okay, GM same nahi aega. But on a single chip with a one less than 10 micron area, micron square area, I can almost ensure that both transistors are identical, both have same threshold, the resistance values are same. So, all the time such circuits will be always integrated circuits and not discrete circuits. Is that clear? Because discrete circuit will lose all its advantage. Okay. So, all, all op amps will be always ICs and not made. Though there is an experiment I have set up in 90s. I think it continued for a while, I do not know now. I purchased some MOS arrays, okay. That means on a single chip more than one transistors, maybe each has available source drain to you. Use those arrays and then create because since on a single area all those transistors were made, they will have almost identical properties. So, there is a MOS arrays through which you can try making an OPAM or at least DFAM in your lab and you say it may come closer to what you are looking for. No guarantee that still it will be good, but at least it will come closer to this. Where on a single chip, everything is acceptable, RDs will be same, these two transistors will be identical. Okay. How much non ideality, non identical term you can tolerate is another, this is called variability issue. Some other time we will discuss that. Variability also is an issue, but not here. If I see its input output characteristics, why we are interested in doing all this? If I plot V in 1 minus that is V difference versus V out, which is V O2 minus V O1 is shown here, but individually if I plot V out 2 and V1, I figure out the V out 1 will follow this curve and V out 2 follow with this curve, 
and somewhere here both will cross halfway. This is very important point. V out one is aega ek upper se niche minus tak jayega ya kam value mein jayega aur ye ulta ho jayega. What does that means? M1, M2 are complementary ek upper gaya to dusra niche aata hai, dusra upper gaya to pehla niche aayega. So this is the trick which Diffam is playing. Is that correct? Because I connected their sources and I am now applying V in 1, V in 2, change in V in 1, V 2 will switch over which transistor will start conducting, okay. And because of that I will get and because if I subtract V out 1 minus V out 2 and plot V i d, the typical curve will be like this. What is this range should be called? This is the linear range that is the plus minus V i d. This is the only plus minus V i d acceptable for defam for which gain is linear. What will happen to here? It is constant, okay. Constant means what? Zero gain or high gain? Zero gain, no change in output but change in input. So gains are 0. So only in this range defam will operate. Is that correct? Because gain is changing, dv by dvn is changing. Is that correct? Here it is 0, here it is 0. So this is essentially the, okay, this word is very important. This is called input range, okay, up to which defam will operate. We will show you this later. If before I quit last minute, I just said in defam the noise is eliminated that is what I said you. You can see V in 1 and V in 2 will have same noise because they are close by same area. So whatever noise appears here will also appear here is that clear and now we will see noise does not come because the source noise come from the environment is that clear noise come from the systems. एक तो EMI बोलते हैं, interference है, दूसरे resistance है जो cable लाते हैं वहाँ से, वो सब के लिए same होते हैं, okay? So generally the environmental noises are identical in a small area. If you say this area, yeah, even there the noise, my voice is noisy, let's say, and you are shout, not shouting, so your noise is zero there. So it's a differential, but in chip the noise will be almost same for both. Okay? It's like over reading. Whatever is true, it will over read on both sides, both inputs. Okay. And then the gain which I am looking, which we say V in 1 plus V in 2 by 2, and if the noise is same, what is the common mode value? It will be same as one of the noise, and the output will become 0, as what I am going to say. So, what will happen? Noise will get eliminated at the output. This is exactly what I am looking in a Defam that common mode signal should not get amplification, but different signal should get amplified. So common means which ones? Noise is common, so they, that will get eliminated. Signals are different voltages, yeah, they will get amplified. Therefore, a defam has advantage that it improves the gain of a different signal, but actually removes the common mode signals. Is that clear? That is the advantage of differential amplifiers. See you then.